Hey everybody, uh, welcome to tuning in for microeconomics. The reason I say that is there's a good chance this is your first video you're going to watch on our website for microeconomics. It's demand. That's the title of this website, okay? Really, it's demand versus quantity demanded. What you're going to find in economics is terminology is key and sometimes it's confusing and sometimes when you first encounter it, you're like, why are they making such a big deal about this, okay? This difference between this term demand and this term quantity demanded is something you want to master. It's going to make your life easier and I'm not going to be able to do it justice in this website on why it's so important, but hopefully we can take our first steps in understanding their differences. I want to start off by just saying, imagine that somebody was talking about like eating some tacos and they said, yeah, my demand for tacos is four, okay? That's actually a statement that doesn't make sense to an economist. And I'm not gonna maybe fully explain why it's not right now. I'm just gonna tell you that what that person should actually say if they were an economist or what an economist would say is they would say at that particular price point, I don't know, $5 a taco, my quantity demanded for tacos is four, okay? So there's a lot of precision that economists want when they use these different terms, all right? Now, you see at the top of the video, it's called demand. Demand is a function. Demand is a relationship. It's telling you the different quantity demanded at all these different price points, okay? Demand is telling you an entire relationship, a series of coordinates between price and quantity demanded. So demand is the relationship. In fact, Anytime your professor says demand, what they're really saying is the demand function. So if you're in class and your professor says demand, think demand function, okay? Which is not quantity demanded. So I'm gonna get a little bit mathematical. I'm gonna do an algebraic expression. I'm just gonna make up a demand function. All right, so what I've got right now is quantity demanded is a function of price. So quantity demanded is a function of price. Quantity demanded equals negative 3p plus 24. Now, first thing I want you to understand is the three and the 24 completely pulled out of thin air. I can make those pretty much any number that I want to. But the negative, I can't. That negative has to be there. That negative is saying the relationship between P and QD is a negative relationship. When price goes up, quantity demanded is going down and vice versa, that's the law of demand. That positive right there. It's got to be there. Why? Because this is a good, not a bad. And what do we mean by it's a good? If price went to zero, the quantity demanded would be a positive amount. So once again, three and 24 made up, could pick any numbers. The negative has to be there. That's the law of demand. The positive has to be there. That's what makes this a good. This thing right here is a demand function, okay? This whole thing is a demand function. It's telling us what QD, what quantity, quantity demanded is going to be at a bunch of different prices. Now, I'm going to go a little bit deeper. And this is the part that I get a little bit nervous about because some kids get a little bit nervous when you hear the term independent variable and dependent variable. But please don't. Please embrace them. If you want to understand economics deeply, if you want to understand why in your class later on as we get into this we say demand shifts left and right instead of up and down it all comes down to the understanding of dependent and independent variable okay even if you didn't understand that i'm just telling you don't back away from this get this down okay what is the independent what is the dependent variable well just looking at this expression price is the independent quantity demanded is the dependent now for some of you that's already seen a graph you might be like well no no no, no. that doesn't make sense Price is on the vertical axis, okay? I know we haven't gotten graphical yet, but I know you, some of y'all have seen a graph already. And that's right, we're gonna put price on the vertical axis, and normally, that's got the dependent variable, but not in economics, not when you're talking about demand. Price, yes, is the independent variable, and yes, it's gonna be on the vertical axis, and that already is giving us that insight into why the demand curve doesn't shift up and down, but shifts left and right, okay? Once again, you're gonna understand that better in other videos. But I want to make sure that we know that. So I'm going to write the independent variable right here. I've got this little box down here. Okay, It's a little thing that I saw when I learned functions for the first time. It's what my uh, teacher used. And I still think it's a little bit uh, helpful right now. So I'm going to put independent variable over here. I'm going to put dependent variable right there. And I'm going to take this function and drop it into the box. Okay, Sometimes you'll say the function itself is the machinery. right? So I'm going to put negative 3p plus 24. So what we can do, independent variable, what is it again? 
It's the price. The price is the independent variable. We can just make up different prices. Let's go with a price of $1, okay? Price of $1. Put that into the machinery of the function. The function, what is the function? The function is demand, okay? This thing is demand. $1 goes in, we got negative uh, three plus 24, we get 21. Oh, before I even write 21, what's the dependent variable? It's quantity demanded, we get 21 out. $1 price goes into the function, quantity demanded of 21, okay? The quantity demanded is a particular amount at a particular price. That's what we mean when we say quantity demanded. Demand is the function itself. I can change the price. The price can go to $2. I still have the same demand function, but my quantity demanded, of course, is gonna change. I've got $2 in here. What do I get? A quantity demanded of 18, popping out on the other side. I can change price again. I can go to $3, put $3 in there. We've got nine right there. I get 15 out right there. When price changes, demand, the function is not changing, but quantity demand, it sure is. And that's gonna be so important for all of economics. We get a price change, don't shift the curve. Demand didn't change, the function hasn't changed. We get a price change, that's a change in quantity demanded. Now later on, I'm gonna talk about demand itself changing. But demand, right now, what we're supposed to know is simply a function. It's simply a relationship that's telling us the different quantity demanded that we're getting at all these different price points. Anyhow, that's the beginning. Stay tuned. We're going to build this up a little bit more in future videos. Thanks for tuning in.